Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, episode 278. Hi, I'm your host, Jacob Ayers. Welcome back to this week's episode. I'm so glad you're here. Today's guest is Duamel Vellen. I met Duamel through a mastermind group with our pal Vinny Chopra, and him and I had several similarities. I wanted to bring him on the podcast and share his story. His is one that is so relatable to many people out there in that he was raised with this blueprint to go to school, get a good education, get a good job, which led Duamel to being a licensed professional engineer in the state of Florida. He started flipping houses early in his career and has now transitioned into a successful apartment syndicator. So I'm excited to bring on Duamel, share his story with you. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, today I welcome on the show my good buddy, Duamel. Duamel, hey, thanks so much for joining us, man. What's going on, brother? Hey, how are you? Man, I am grateful. I am very thankful that you invited me on, man. So uh, I'm here to bring as much value as I can to you and to your audience, bro. Sure, sure. Of course, I know that'll happen. Well, hey, I know that you and I had first met through our good buddy, Vinny Chopra. You and I are both part of his mastermind group. Such a killer guy there. You and I, you know, had connected on a few calls. I knew I had to get you on the podcast. Tell your story because you have a really relatable journey. But before I spoil it all, I'll let you tell us. So why don't we just, uh, you know, turn it over to you. Tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, what you do, and just kind of your journey, man. Awesome, man. Appreciate that. So I'm originally from Puerto Rico. Right now we're experiencing some earthquakes, man. So uh, it's kind of weird down there. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> hope everybody's all right down there. So originally from the island, we, we immigrated here. I was still in, a, in elementary school and just, you know, middle class upbringing, kind of uh, tough, getting into the new culture, new language, you know, just kind of modern my way through, you know, uh, school, going through uh, high school. As a child, you're told, hey, you got to pick a profession. You have to work that nine to five. So, you know, I chose electrical engineering. I've always liked the construction. I was like electrical electronics. I went into the electrical engineering field. Yeah. And so a little anecdote, man. So my grandmother, she played a strong role in my upbringing, man. So she was the matriarch for our whole family. I mean, you're talking like 15 grandkids and everybody shut up when she spoke. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So uh, she was very tough specifically on me because I kind of grew up in her house. But I promised her that I would be a professional engineer. And so uh, that's really what drove me to get that license. You know, it was just a... I don't think I've ever actually told that story. I just kind of wanted to get it out there. So uh, that's really what drove me to get through into the engineering profession and eventually get that PE. Yeah, man, that's awesome. And I think a couple things there, you know, having that reason why, I mean, like, you know, you, you come from a, you know, a modest upbringing, but you are able to achieve something, right? That professional engineer designation, right. which I know how difficult that is. You know, you and I had bonded over the engineering world before that's this right. call. But uh, yeah, one thing I want to pull back is, uh, you know, I told the audience members that you had a really relatable story. And that's like so many people out there, you're kind of born with this blueprint to go to school, get a good education, study something difficult, get a degree (laughs) and get that day job, right? So I'm sure like myself, you know, you did that. Well, I know you did that, right? And then you kind of were left like, okay, well, I did that. What's next, right? So, you know, tell us what happened after that. So then start to realize that your salary, you're not going to get wealthy from your employee salary. And actually, somebody the other day, I I bought some jet skis 10 years ago. I live in Florida now. (laughs) So uh, a lot of lakes, a lot of sunshine. So I bought some jet skis from this gentleman. And when I went to go pick them up at his house, man, he lived on the river, freaking mansion. He had a garage for his cars and he had like, like a car lift and a brand new Corvette. He was putting like a race engine. I was like, holy crap. Like, how right? <laughs> yeah, right. And, 
And so one of the things that resonated with me is you will never be wealthy as an employee. You have to be an owner. And so he kind of repeated that a few times. And another thing that he mentioned was uh, wealth isn't about, you know, having these houses and these river, you know, on the river and having all these toys. It's what kind of impact can you, can you have on the community? Who can you help? And it turned out that he's kind of a big philanthropist in uh, Cocoa Beach is a town here off the coast. And he's a big philanthropist there and helps a lot of underprivileged people. And I didn't know that. I just randomly met this guy and, and having all this knowledge thrown at me, that kind of peaked an interest and lit a little bit of a fire. Man, that jet ski transaction almost turned into like this rich dad, poor dad <laughs> relationship for That's you. Exactly. It yeah. Yeah. I should have built the relationship, but yeah, <laughs> had I known any better. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. So, you know, you land this engineering job, you know, you've worked there for a while now, but you've started doing real estate on the side. So tell us about that. Why real estate? Was it from that man. conversation with this jet ski owner or, you know, what exactly Dude. inspired you? So it goes full circle right back to my grandmother. Okay. My grandmother was, and she was orphaned as a kid, 10 years old, 11 years old from like the inside of Puerto Rico, like up in the mountains, you know, dirt floors type deal. Mm -hmm. She had nothing. Her and my grandfather eloped and like ran away from the town, went all the way to the big city of San Juan. (laughs) (laughs) It's like by car now, it's like an hour and a half journey. Like you wonder how do people never find them? But (laughs) right. You know, so uh, they got to the big city with nothing but their clothes on their back. And so she ended up building a portfolio of real estate rentals. No idea, like looking back on it, we don't know how she got there or what made her do that. Like I kind of wish I, maybe what I know now that maybe I could have interviewed her or asked her, but so just growing up, it was just kind of like, oh, another one of grandmother's houses or uh, going with one of my uncles to help paint the house or going with my dad to cut the grass. It was kind of natural. just kind of don't really think about it. You know, she's got five or six properties. She's living off that rent and she was always buying us cool gifts. So fast forward to 10 years ago or so and about 12, 13 years ago, I'm like, man, you know, grandma was onto something because she was living whatever life she wanted. She could sleep all day. She could watch novelas all day <laughs> <laughs> and all her bills were paid. So that's what motivated me to get into real estate. And so what I did was I got into uh, flipping houses Yeah. Okay. because uh, having the blueprint of you don't know what you don't know. So I thought... I don't have any capital, right? Because I'm just starting out as an engineer. You know, I'm just starting my life. So how do I even get started? So, okay, I got to flip houses because mm-hmm. that's how you can get some cash. And then maybe you can start buying some rental portfolio. So, dude, I am very grateful, very lucky. I had a buddy that was, I know you can't tell right now, but I used to work out a lot. <laughs> <And so, laughs> For the audience listening, just listening in, you know, obviously you have. I have huge muscles, <laughs> like the Hulk. So we're working out one day and, and so I had been reading all these books about flipping and, you know, Jay Scott, when he first, before anybody knew who he was, he was just some dude out of Atlanta. And so, I mean, I, I got fully immersed in the education in his ear all day. As I'm spotting him, I just couldn't stop talking about flipping houses and real estate because he was an entrepreneur and he had a little bit of cash. So finally convinced him to do a flip together. And so what we did is we bought a $30,000 house. I negotiated with a local wholesaler. I had been building relationships. I mean, I was doing the, all, everything that textbook said to do. And so I negotiated from 39 down to 30K because it was a house nobody wanted. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was probably like 2010, maybe 2009 range. So yeah, it was even in the recessions. So we bought this house for 30,000. We put 30 into it, ended up selling it for like 105, 110, and which was pretty damn good win. And we split the profits 50 50. So out of nowhere, out of zero, now I had like 15 to 20 grand yeah. uh, in my bank account. I was like, man, so this is pretty cool and easy. So I just parlayed that and for about the next 10 years, I was flipping houses. You know, my wife and I got into it. And so we flipped about 20 properties. Wow. And yeah. so, so you probably realize like, you know, this flipping thing is kind of similar to my job, right? You have to go out, find a property. It's a very manual and labor intensive process, right? Even if you automate it and outsource things, you're still kind of managing this business, right? It still kind of tends to be that day job I think you would find. So is that what you found? Dude, yeah, that times two. So uh, (laughs) because when you're at work and you're nine to five, you're trusting that the contractor's at the house. Yeah. And then so uh, 
yeah, I would leave work and then show up to the house. Like nothing happened today. Like what's going on? Oh, they had another job. So oh, we'll come back next week. Like, are you kidding me, dude? Like I'm paying a mortgage on this thing. Yeah, it was stressful. I fired contractors. What the catalyst was for me was in 2014, 2013, I was traveling a lot for work. So uh, I live in Orlando now. I was traveling to California for work and I was spending several weeks at a time. And so I had a couple of flips going at that time. And again, it's just me and my wife because you don't know what you don't know. So we're just trying to work our way through this. And so, man, our contractors are, you know, and I work for an electrical contractor, so I love contractors. Right. <laughs> but, but man, they were, felt like they were screwing us, man. Like they weren't showing up. They were way over budget, way over schedule. And it was kind of like the last straw, man. Like I had a very stressful time because I'm traveling. So I'm way out of control now. And uh, I felt like they're, you know, they're lying to my wife or you're taking advantage that I wasn't there. Every single flip was stressful. Yeah, like, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, there, there wasn't one that was like, uh, where you're just a cakewalk. You, know, you always hear about these uh, fluff and buffs, I think they call them, where they come in and just put some uh, lipstick on it. Like, yeah. dude, I never found those. <laughs> <laughs> so is there ever a point in your journey, I'm sure there was, where kind of this light bulb clicked and you said, okay, I'm right done there. with this flipping. That was it, huh? That was it, man. So uh, I was like 2014, we got rid of that property. And I told my wife, so we need to stop and figure something else out because this is not the way to wealth building. We had a few rental properties that we started picking up, but it wasn't the portfolio that you're expecting that's going to, you know, uh, cover your W-2. Not at all. It was, uh, it's a modest, I mean, this thing is a grind with a full-time job. You got to keep building. Yeah, absolutely. uh, And then we got pregnant in 2015. So I was like, definitely have to figure something else out because with a baby, we're not going to be flipping houses. I'm not going to send my wife out to you know deal with contractors with a baby in the car. So I said, all right, I have, my idea is multifamily. Let's go to multifamily because it's easy. You get a duplex or triplex or a quad yeah, and, right. and you rent it out. And so, so how did you get into that space? What'd you do next? So first thing I did was find what is the best book I, that I could learn from. I decided I'm going to, this is going to be a textbook. This is going to be a college class for me. Yeah. So I found Multifamily Millions by David Lindahl. Okay. Uh-huh. And so what that book did, I don't think, I've never met David, but uh, I'm so grateful for him because that cracked open my brain and said, think bigger, man. So in that book, it said, you know, like as you're reading, like anybody can buy a 24 unit, anybody can buy a 16 unit, 32 unit. It's like, holy crap, I'm thinking multifamily is duplexes and triplexes and quads and limiting myself to, no, dude, like there's this whole other world that anybody can tap into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's yeah. awesome, man. It's like going back to what you said earlier, you don't know what you don't know, right? You kind of think right. that, hey, maybe that 24 units out of my grasp or maybe that 100 unit or even 300 unit apartment complex, that's way beyond what I'm capable of, right? I'm here managing my little single family house or my flip or my duplex, right? And in that book, I'm sure you realize that, you know, that world is definitely possible if you just spend some time educating yourself, getting around the right people and immersing yourself in that world. So tell us, you know, a little bit about your journey into that multifamily space. Holy crap. It has been a journey. (laughs) It has, man. Like uh, I get emotional. I mean, I'm just getting started, man. But uh, so 2018 is when. I really dove into this book. So 2017, I had been making offers on duplexes and tripling that, my limiting belief. So after I got this book in 2018, I ran through it. I thought I have it downstairs, but uh, yeah, like I have it all marked up, tabs everywhere. Yeah. And then I ran through it again because I'm like, man, there's no way, I'm not going to say it's this easy, but there's no way it's this clear. So yeah. then, so I went, ran through it again, man, I got notepads and everything going. And so fall or winter of 2018, I tell my wife, it's like, man, like, so I'm ready. You know, it's like a boxer, <laughs> you know, backstage, hey, you're about to get on the ring. So I'm like, all right, I'm ready. I'm pent up. Let's go. How do I get started? Where do I go? So I said, I got to find some like-minded individuals. I got to look around. I got to meet some people. I got to get in an atmosphere of people that are doing this. Started looking for seminars. Like, Dude, I'm willing to fly anywhere across the United States. I'm willing to go to Alaska right now. <laughs> right, I was that fired up. Like, yeah. like, that's it. I have to change my life and my family's life. And so this is the way to do it. So I found the Rod Cleef event. Yeah. It was right. two, two weeks from the day that I decided it was right and in my backyard. 
perfect, right? Dude, like the universe is talking to me, man. <laughs> so you go, you take that first step, you start surrounding yourself with like-minded people while learning from, you know, a guy like Rod Cleef, kind of, you know, learning this whole new world that you just kind of cracked open, right? So, man. you know, you got the mindset piece, you've got the network, you're surrounding yourself with folks. What was really that first action step for you? How'd you get into the world of multifamily? Yeah, man. So uh, he gives you a 90 day program and like a 90 day challenge. Mm -hmm. And I literally took the challenge every day, took action towards my goal. Yeah. So uh, every single day I did something. I talked to brokers, even though I didn't know what the heck I was talking about. I visited properties. Yeah. I mean, I did started learning to underwrite. I did the Michael Blanc underwriting course. Yeah. Uh, did the Michael Blanc course. So um, I just fully immersed myself into this and started making offers. I started, you know, talking to mortgage lenders, start, started talking to investors, you know, got some coaching along the way, which uh, very, very high on coaching. So I have an athletics background. I grew up, you know, playing baseball. And so whenever you were struggling as a hitter, you got a hitting coach, right? Michael Jordan struggled at shooting. He got a shooting coach. Yeah. So it's like, if I want to, you know, I'm struggling to get into this industry, why wouldn't I get a coach that's in this industry? So I did that. And so ever since I got into coaching, changing my mindset, building a team, getting clarity, it's been a wild ride. This, in 2019, I was involved in two large syndications as a capital raising partner, due diligence partner, because both deals were here in Central Florida. And so built a due diligence team. Yeah, it's a quick ride for me. Yeah, let's jump into those in just a second. But one thing I want to pull out of what you're talking about here, Dumel, is I've noticed this in you personally as well, is you really are very like action oriented, right? Like every week you're going out and doing something. You and I connect on a call every week and it's what did Dumel do this week? Oh, what <laughs> property did Dumel walk this week? Or, you know, what podcast is he on? Or, you know, who's he talking with? What relationship is he making? So you're always out there doing something, taking one step after another, right? And, you know, that's got Absolutely. you where you are today. In just a short amount of time. So last year, you were involved in a couple huge syndications with our <laughs> buddy, Vinny Chopra. I think it's a great way to kind of get started in the world of real estate investing by partnering up with a guy like him, right? Who has so much success. So you partner up with him. Tell us about how you made that happen and what that process looked like. Yeah. So uh, it's a pretty cool story. Actually, I, I don't think I've, I've told it. So now Vinny invites the students to participate in his deals. Mm-hmm. Well, back then he did not. Back then he just did his deals and then he would do case studies on his mastermind. So when I found out that his next deal was in, in my backyard, like 20 minutes from my house, I told him, I said, dude, I need to be a part of this deal. How can I be a part of this deal? How can I add value to you? And that's when he told me, he said, no, this isn't for students. This is just for me and my team. Maybe you can help me do a case study later, but... For some context, yeah. this was like a 52, $53 million deal, right? So yeah. this is... This is no four units. This is a big deal. Yeah. And so, uh, so I'm like, Vinny, I'll carry your bags. I'll pick you up from the airport. I'll bring you coffee every morning. Like, <laughs> I'll carry your camera. Like, I'll do anything. And so he, he got a laugh out of that. He's like, all right, you know what? If you're there at seven in the morning, I'll let you walk the property with us. So sure enough, I was there. I brought waters. You know, <laughs> I came to the man. <laughs> and so uh, what was awesome is that as soon as he saw me, I've never met him in person. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he saw me, he came like running. Over. I mean, he has an entourage of like eight to 10 people. And he comes running and hugs me. And it's like, oh, hey, come on in. It's like, oh, I was immediately part of the click. So, <laughs> yeah. So I worked through, I helped him look at the property. So, I mean, imagine going from zero to walking a $52 million deal, 324 unit deal, walking it on the tour with the broker. You know, we're, asking questions, taking photos, asking about deferred maintenance, you know, just these little things. I mean, I would even ask Vinny, hey, what are you looking at? And he goes, oh, I'm looking at the cars in the parking lot to see what kind of uh, class this is. Okay. And then what are you looking at now? Oh, I'm just looking at the structure. <laughs> you know, like everything he did, I was like, just, I promised to be invisible, but I was just in his ear. So what are you looking <laughs> at now? <laughs> what are you doing now? He goes, oh, I'm just adjusting my pants, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, noted. I'll do that next site walk. Yeah, I'll do it, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's great, man. And you know, you saw an opportunity out there, you put yourself out there, really kind of took a leap. And then all of a sudden, here you are on the due diligence team for a $52 million yeah. deal. And you're actually bringing value too, right? You've got a network of investors, you're helping raise capital for this deal. That makes you a partner in this deal. How cool is that? 
Dude, it's been wild. This whole thing, I'm telling you, this journey has been a blessing, man. It's allowed me to bring blessings to other people's lives as well. Because of that journey, I was able to build a team. Because, you know, one thing you learn is that this is a team sport for sure. You can't do this on your own. You know, I learned very quickly that, like, in this example, here's Vinny with an entourage. Well, who's his entourage? He's got a general contractor. He's got his property manager. He's got his insurance guy. I mean, he had his lender. His agency lenders, I mean, so like he has a team. So it's not like it's just, it's not a bunch of buddies or, I mean, everybody has a role in how they're going to get this deal done. So that was another eye-opening experience for me. It's like, you know what? I have to build a team. If if I want to be, you know, the next Vinny Chopra, then I need to emulate him and build a team. And so that's what I've been focused on, you know, this past year is building that team, building that network, building an investor base. So you talk about the, you know, taking action every week. It's a, yeah, I literally have a matrix or spreadsheet that has all the different team members that we would need to be successful. And then I have to put names in there. So I'm constantly networking and, and, you know, just meeting people and interviewing people, whether they know they're being interviewed or not, you know, I'm constantly (laughs) just hard at work, man. Right, right. Well, I know that's not the end of your journey. In fact, this is really just the beginning. You've gone on to do a few more deals and you're actively doing your own deals. So that's, I mean, a really cool segue into, you know, becoming a successful syndicator and, you know, leading deals like you're doing now. But up to this point, I think this is a really relatable journey for many people out there listening. Like maybe they're sitting at home thinking, hey, I've got a duplex or hey, I'm interested in real estate investing or I've got a small portfolio or whatever it is. I'm just trying to see that next step. How do I become a successful apartment syndicator? And this is a really replicable kind of process, you know, go out, find somebody who's doing what you want to do, provide value from them, look for opportunities, seize them, and then, you know, look where it gets you, right? Yeah. And number one, think big, right? Think, get rid of your limiting beliefs. Think that you can do this. You do belong, you know, because I'll be honest with you, when I first started interacting, when I was in person with Vinny and his team, I'm thinking, holy crap, like, I'm just a dude, man. Like, what am I even doing here? But as soon as I got rid of that, you know, I became, I integrated and found out always looking for how can I provide value and found those opportunities and just started capitalizing on how, because we all have value to provide. Like you're bringing value. You're contributing to this world right now by giving this knowledge and, you know, bringing, you know, this type of podcast to the world, which is amazing. So we all have value to give. It's just a matter of finding and tapping into it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I know you've gone on to start your own company. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing there with 1015 Capital and then, you know, kind of what your goals are. And then we'll wrap up with some lightning round questions. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So yeah, I've launched my company 1015. It's 1015 is uh, October 15th, which is the day that my wife and I met 15 years ago. All right. So uh, she makes me put it that way. I I don't ever forget our anniversary date. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. (laughs) So what I'm focused on now is, uh, Something Vinny had said was, uh, is he wants you to fly the nest. Like he wants to, you know, one of his, I guess, models for his students is I I want to teach you so you can fly on your own, so you can leave the nest. I've been focused on that and how do I get my own deals going? Obviously very grateful for everything along the way, but how do I get my own deals going? And so I started this company and so focused on minority investors. And so what I found was, that I would go back to my neighborhoods or in our communities or would be, you know, like some sort of a place where we're hanging out with friends and nobody knew, at least nobody that I spoke to, that they can invest in apartment complexes, which is tends to be consult with your CPA or do your own research, but tends to be recession proof. It's very stable. I mean, it's not super sexy because it's not like you're getting 20% returns or you can, but they're typically just average, just flatline, good returns, solid returns, six to 10%. And so there, everybody thinks of stocks. It's my 401k, my IRA. I need to yeah, put that right. in mutual funds where it's volatile. So I'm like, man, like my community, nobody knows about this. So I have actually focused my attention to building that education in our community. So my partner, Myron, shout out to Myron. And my partner, Myron and I, we focus on within our communities, creating these seminars for potential investors I mean, it's people that we know or friends of friends and, you know, we'll put on these events where we're teaching them the power of investing in multifamily apartments and syndications as a passive investor. Because a lot of times people want to 
we found that, oh, I've always wanted to get into real estate. I just didn't know how. So yeah. it's easy. Then invest as a passive, poof, you are an investor and you're getting your returns. So I have been really focused on building our community, you know, giving back to our community by educating them and bringing them into this space. That's great, man. I love it. Kind of going full circle, right? Going back and That's teaching, it. you know, that 15 or 20 year old Duhamel what, you know, yeah. he wished he would have known at that age, right? So <laughs> absolutely, man. So great, man. Well, hey, you know, it's been a lot of fun talking about, you know, how you got started in the world of real estate investing coming from modest upbringings to now, you know, being in these huge deals and, you know, being a successful real estate investor. It's really cool. I'm sure inspiring to many people out there. So as we're wrapping up here, let's wrap up with our lightning round. Just a series of questions we'd like to fire at you. You up for it? Uh Uh-oh. Let's do it, man. All right, cool. Well, the first question is, what was your biggest hurdle getting started investing in real estate? And then what did you do to overcome that? Awesome. Great question, man. Wow. Limiting beliefs, man. Changing the mindset. So I mentioned earlier about thinking that I do belong. So I used to think that multifamily was duplex, triplex, quads, and that's the ceiling. Yeah. So once I broke through that limiting belief and uh, was able to transform my mindset, I think that has been for me the most powerful thing. Yeah. Great. I love it. Well, do you have a personal habit that contributes to your success? Yeah. I believe strongly in taking massive action. You mentioned you know, that you hear about me taking action and stuff like that. I'm humbled by that. Like, what you see is what you got. I'm just a dude. I'm normal, humble as hell, <laughs> <laughs> but driven, man. I believe that massive action is my secret weapon. Kobe Bryant said that I'm willing to outwork anyone. And he was the best, you know, and in his time. And so I take that to heart as well. I'm, I'm willing to outwork anyone. I'll, I'll read, I'll study, I'll network, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm constantly taking action towards all of my goals. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dumel, do you have an online resource that you find valuable in your day to day? I like that question. <laughs> YouTube, man. <laughs> Can't beat it, huh? <laughs> no, I literally, man, I was looking at my YouTube feed, man. I literally listen to hours a day of just different things, man. I, I believe in uh, personal growth and spiritual growth. So I listen to of those type of things. I've gotten into, man, a couple of genres of music, which is uh, one's called like trip hop, acid jazz. I think they call it lo-fi now. <laughs> okay. It, yeah. It's kind of like just jazzy hip hop, but there's no singing, no rapping, just instrumentals. I found that that helps me focus. So I pop that on and maybe it'll help me focus on a task or maybe I'm meditating on something or underwriting. It helps me stay focused on underwriting. Another one I found was this thing called ambient dub techno. And dude, I thought I didn't like techno music, but uh, <laughs> this thing is more, uh, it's kind of jazzy techno. It's just really cool, man. Huh. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> the things you can find on YouTube, huh? Well, it's Exactly. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> looking. I just somehow popped up. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Dumel, what book would you recommend to the listeners and why? I would recommend the books that transformed me was uh, The Multifamily Millions. It's definitely the book that mostly impacted me. Another book that I recently read that I uh, really enjoyed is not real estate related, but it's called The Art of Stress-Free Living by Dr. Brian Ramos. And so I'm not a health nut or health junkie, but I like to be healthy. And this book, it's a good foundation for understanding how foods in- impact who you are, your attitude, your day-to-day energy. And so, you know, if for what we're trying to get into, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of brain power. So you want to feed your body the right nutrients and all that. So that book I recently, I got a lot of pointers on. Jack Canfield's The Success Principles. Okay. Yeah. Like step, the like very first sentence in the book says, take 100% responsibility for yourself, which means where you're at today is because of you, not because those. of what happened to you. Yeah. So that's a book that was gifted to me and I didn't expect it just showed up in my doorstep and a friend of mine had sent it and it's impacted also how I view the world and how I think. Awesome. So I gave you, I gave you three, man. Good recommendations. <laughs> we'll link all those in the show notes if our audience members are interested in checking those out. Do a last question in the lightning round. If you're to go back and give advice to your 20 year old self to get started investing in real estate, what would you tell 20 year old do All right. So, uh, <laughs> where was I 20 years ago? Right. So I think I had an Afro, maybe I had cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> Cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, wow. Uh, limiting beliefs, man. I know what I would tell myself would be 
change your friends, your circle of influence, find higher quality people, you know, just get better friends around you, get a better support team, support cast, find successful people. I felt that, you know, growing up, you stick to the same people that you grew up with from the neighborhood. And so if they're not doing anything, you're not doing anything. If I got rid of that limiting belief that I didn't belong when I was 20, I think I would have been maybe interacting with some higher caliber people, maybe some movers and shakers. Wouldn't be afraid to put myself out there in, in circumstances and grow much faster. So I think what I would tell, man, that was a beautiful question. I think what I would tell my 20 year old self is, man, change your circle, man. I love it. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, as said by Jim Rohn, right? So awesome stuff. Duhamel, hey, man, it's been a lot of fun having you on this podcast. Look forward to having you back on in the future. I know you've got some big things ahead of you. So love to have you back on, talk about those future deals. As we're wrapping up, where can the audience members check out more about you, learn more about you, connect with you? Sure. Uh, Before we head out, thank you so much for this opportunity, man. You bet. It's Uh, our pleasure, man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm grateful, man. I'm extremely grateful. Those that don't know Jacob, he's a grandson of Roy Ayers. Everybody loves the sunshine. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> I'll, I'll take credit for that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, great guy, man. He, What you see is what you get. Humble, uh, driven, smart as hell. Like, I admire you, man. Proud of what you're doing and where you're going. So, uh, Hey, with those kind up, words, man. I'm going to have you back on in the next episode. So just keep <laughs> <Yeah>. it up. <laughs> Come back in an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome, dude. Well, we'll uh, where can people check you out at? Sure. So, uh, 1015.co, T E N 15.co. That, that's probably the best place to catch me. So, my email, if anybody wants to hit me up, it's duamel at 1015.co, D U A M E L at T E N 15.co. And yeah, I'm always willing to talk to anybody, willing to talk to strangers, man. So, Don't be a stranger. Let's become friends. Awesome. Dumel, hey, thanks so much for providing all that great value. We'll link your contact information on the website and the show notes if audience members want to check you out. Dumel, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for letting me share those stories, man. Like, uh, believe it or not, like I'm a little emotional right now. So I'm glad. I'm thankful for the opportunity, man. I I think I I shared some stuff that I probably never shared before. And you're making me reflect a little bit right now. So (laughs) thank you so much, man. Good. Thanks, Dumel. Take care. That wraps up this week's episode with our guest, Duamel Velen. Hey, I hope you got so much value from that conversation. If you want to learn more about any of the resources we mentioned in today's conversation, you can find those in the show notes. As always, for more information, resources, and to connect with me, you can do so at www.jacobayers.com. Till next week engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an